One of the basic assumptions is that the future does not exist. No such thing as a future. Now we talk as if the future exists. I hope my future is going to be better. What does that say? Here I am, and when I get to my future with Suzuki someplace, I hope, oh boy, I hope that's better. Yeah. Or why am I educating myself? I'm preparing myself for the future. Well, how do you know? A fellow told me that he was working in uh, Bort or Amal, I don't know, it's 20 years ago. He, was, he had this big project. He was taking women out of slums and teaching them punch cards. And the minute they all graduated with honors from this course, no more punch cards. So, so how do you know what, 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 what you're doing? Okay, I'm going to be talking about some paradoxes. Mm -hmm. I can move this one. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the paradoxes is we can have an infinite number of alternative futures infinite. There's no limitation. Within finite boundaries. Infinite within finite. Well, the one boundary are the laws of nature. You can't imagine or create a future that violates the laws of nature. Sorry. That's the way it goes. You know. And the second thing, so you got laws of nature, Here you've got global trends. Well, with all due respect, you cannot reverse global trends. We're going to have more communications, not less. The world is going to get smaller, not bigger. The global economy is going to become more unified as a global economy. The global workforce is going to be a global workforce. Boundaries don't mean anything anymore in terms of economics. If 80% of the GDP of the world today is knowledge, not some physical thing. Because even the physical thing is knowledge. Mm -hmm. you have to People talk about the difference between services and product. What is this? What should start thinking differently? What is this? Is this a product or a service? Not product result of the service. It's a service, it writes. If this didn't write, it wouldn't be anything. It's a service with a physical package. And I say a service is a product without a physical package. I have a translation company. My product is an attachment on an email. It's a product. It's a service. What is it? And does an accountant that works in industry, is he in industry or is he in the service? How does he count it statistically when they do the statistics about who works where, and how many people work where? How many people really work in high tech? My daughter worked for a high tech firm. I go, my daughter. All stores, the for a high tech firm. My daughter worked for a high tech firm. There's like 40 people there. You know, and only two or three were engineers. The rest were like marketing, administration. But they were all statistically high tech. And within this, you can have an infinite number of futures. And I like the word futures and not future. And the reason I like the word futures and not future is because in the intellectual history of the West, utopia, rather than utopias, has created some really nasty stuff. A utopia can create a totalitarian mindset. If you don't agree with that totalitarian mindset, they send you to be re-educated. 19th and 20th, 20th century especially, has been infected by utopia, which is what I think I'm using. I like utopia. 
else, or as we say in the Jewish tradition, can you have Which is also very democratic, because the democracy is by its essence pluralistic. The other thing is, it's not only communications, globalization, it's the desire for self-actualization. What we call in Zionism, Hakshimad, self-realization. Any policy that calls for people to self-sacrifice their very humanity and their very ability to optimize who and what they are is not only in my mind immoral, but will not work. It's immoral against the individual, and indirectly, or today maybe not so indirectly, immoral against society. Because what is the job of organized society? Is to enable the individuals that compose that organized society to fulfill their optimal potential as human beings. I'm going to get a little philosophical. We are one-time events, every one of us, in the cosmos. 300 billion stars in our galaxy, trillions of galaxies. We're the only one of us. We're the only one. We have a moral responsibility not to self -serve. We have a moral responsibility to self actualize I'm, I'm, I'm throwing in some of my, my personal prejudices here, so please forgive me. And I say that the desire for self-actualization is the great motive force, the great motor force of society and economy in the 21st century. And therefore, democracy is no longer only an ideal. It's an absolute necessity. Because what are the trends are speed, flexibility, and quality. That's what characterizes the modern economy and modern society. You gotta be fast. You gotta be flexible. And speed and flexibility are the quality. If you're not fast, that's why you know, we always say, well, you know, they, they, they put these uh, to, to note, these programs, these computer programs, they got, they put the bugs in them on purpose. You know, there's this urban myth. They don't put the bugs in them on purpose. They just get it to the market before they take all the bugs out. Because if they waited until they take all the bugs out, the product would be uh, obsolete by the time it got to the market. But you got to be fast. If you've got to be fast and you've got to be flexible, you can't live in a totalitarian society. Totalitarian societies or authoritarian societies are, by definition, inflexible. I used to work with a woman who came from Belarus. She said, before she came here, she said, if you, live, if you worked in, in any kind of, of government office and you had to Xerox something, you had to get a permission slip. Then you had to go to this little window, give them a permission slip. Then you get the Xerox thing two days later. This is even before email. This is, this is when, like, in Israel, you're talking on the phone and say, well, okay, I'm sending you the fax now. Who is Xerox and send me the fax now, you know? Well, it's, it's just not going to work. The Soviet Union did not collapse because it was immoral. The Soviet Union collapsed because it was inflexible. And it was immoral as a kid. But that's not what I call it. 